<clears throat> so for 10 years, I, was, I did executive coaching. I worked with executives. I helped them understand their stories. I assessed them. I put them through a behavioral interview, told them what they were good at across 52 different competencies, how they would play with the team, what they would do well, what they wouldn't do well. And the advice that I would give to people would be things like, tone down your aggressiveness. Don't let anybody know you're an introvert. Go out and, and make things happen. You're going to have to get over that introversion. Uh, you're too high control. You need to bring things, get more of a, get more control over your work. You need to be more detail-oriented. Personality factors. Interpersonal skills. Things that don't have anything to do with their technical or professional skills. These, this is the advice that I'm giving to folks. When I would do training, and we would talk about communications and problems organizations would ha be having with communications, I'd find myself in discussions with people who would say, well, my boss is an autocrat. And the advice would be, well, you know what? Prepare yourself for emotional abuse. That's how you deal with an autocratic boss. Now, where in the professional world does prepare yourself for emotional abuse fall in? It doesn't. It has to do with helping people personally get over resistance. Because it turns out, not only is it that our resistance is personal, but the reason for that, the, it turns out that nobody turns off their personality when they come to work. You may hire for a job, but everybody in this room knows the whole person comes to work when that person shows up on day one. Their bad morning shows up, their bad relationships show up, all the baggage comes with them. People are personal. Relationships are personal. Activities? Activities follow very specific protocols. An activity can be professional. An activity can be personal. An activity can be social. So we're looking at social media. We're talking about engaging people on LinkedIn, engaging them on Facebook. Well, how many of you have a, a social network, personal network on Facebook? Okay, and we just heard that recruiting on Facebook is one of the things that this is an untapped opportunity. Do you intend to keep those networks separate? And if so, how? <laughs> what was that? That works until somebody reaches out to you on Facebook and says, let's just connect. Professional and personal stay separate until somebody, a coworker, shows up on a softball team. Until a friend starts dating a coworker. Until you start dating a coworker. The lines here blur, and once they go, they go quickly. That distinction doesn't work at an identity level and at a relationship level. The activities you engage in can fit in these boxes. The relationships don't. Let the lines blur. Now, what does that mean? Well, usually when I say that, I, I get, now, I, usually when I say that, uh, people think, but often when I say that, I get some resistance. People say, okay, well, well, how do I manage that? Or, what, what do I do? And my answer is, it's actually a lot easier to manage that than the opposite. In 1984, McDonald's came out with a sandwich called the McDLT. Anybody here remember the McDLT? Oh, yeah. Right, hot side hot, cold side cold. So for those of you who were not around, you got a bottom bun and a burger over here, you got a top bun with lettuce, tomato, and cheese over here. And it came in one of this, like this barbell-shaped styrofoam thing, and you pop the whole top off and you kind of put your sandwich together and you ate it. It was a pan ass. <laughs> it was good. It was good. In 1990, about December of 1990, McDonald's killed it. There was a whole bunch of environmental pushback on the fact that it had all this packaging. It just seemed to be a waste. Managing that sandwich was untenable. It was too expensive to manage this McDLT. The sandwich ultimately was a failure. Not only was it a failure as a sandwich strategy, it's a failure as a life strategy. Think about the effort that goes into keeping your personal and professional world separate. There's a whole Seinfeld episode about your worlds colliding. How much easier would life be if you just get to be you? If you have permission to be yourself wherever you are? Now, does that mean that I can wear shorts to work? Maybe, maybe not. It has to do with where you work. But you already solved that problem in your personal life. Tonight's Friday night. Maybe you live in San Antonio. Maybe you're planning on coming out for TNL. And maybe you're invited to a very casual affair. Shorts and flip-flops kind of affair. You can't get dressed for both. You pick one. You dress for that one. And when you show up overdressed and all your friends are in jean shorts and, or not, hopefully not jean shorts. <laughs> huh? 
shorts and flip flops, and they say, you know, you're, why are you overdressed? You just tell them, I came from another event. And they go, oh, okay. Because they know the activity you were engaged in was a professional activity. And they say, okay, I get you, I get the personal you, but you're dressed for what had been a professional activity. That works. You already know how to manage this. The flip side of that is try and keep them separate and to make up all kinds of excuses. Or to keep a change of clothes in your car and then you pull up to the parking garage and go, what are you going to do? Like change in the parking garage and hope no one sees you as you're changing your clothes? It doesn't work. And yet that's what we do in our professional lives all the time. So be you. Let the activity be professional. But bring your whole self there. Be honest about that. Don't worry about managing the difference because you already know how to do that. Once you make the leap, you'll have that VA moment. You'll go, oh, you know what? I get it. Now let's look at the flip side real quickly. Companies. Who here works for a company that might be resistant to the notion of professionalism? Your company already struggles with the notion of professionalism. It shows up in absenteeism. It shows up in lost productivity. It shows up in uh, low employee morale. When you look at engagement or whatever your metric is for how invested employees are with the brand, the gap between where they are and where the company wants them to be, that's the personal stuff. That gap can be closed with professionalism. Now, if you want to engage in professionalism, what you need to do is you need to make clear to the company that you understand there's certain protocols that go around activities, and you will maintain a professional protocol when engaged in work activities. But let's not kid ourselves. When you have a bad morning, you're dragging it all morning. It's not when you walk in the, the day and, wow, I just completely forgot about this fight I just was having with my spouse 20 seconds ago. It doesn't happen. The whole you comes to work, and the more honest you are about that, the better it will be for everybody. Your manager is afraid that professionalism means you're showing up in, in flip-flops and shorts. If you want a more honest dialogue with your managers, with your company, then you need to be clear to your company, look, I'm a whole person, you're a whole person, we're building relationships on, first of all, whether or not we like each other as human beings before we ever get to the activities we do. That's what professionalism means to me, and if you give me that much, I will commit to you that I will maintain a professional protocol around the activities we engage in. That simple concept will help you implement the tools that we've been talking about. Because the hangups you have in your head, the little things that are, are rattling around the back of your brain, have to do with what happens when I engage. What will my friends start to think when I put out a, a job post on Facebook? What will the candidates think if I put something personal out on Facebook? What will my boss think if I am on social media? Those are the resistance points that I see people have when we talk social media. Professionalism as a concept, if you embrace that, will help you start moving through it because it, it blows all of those resistance points away. And all you're left with are the technical issues of, right, how do I actually use this website? And that you've been doing for over a decade. You know the answers to those questions. That is my very abbreviated introduction of professionalism. I'm going to hit the pause button.